Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. So, um, my the title of my presentation is is very wide, uh, yet very interesting at the same time. So, I would like to have a few words on the about the impact of the professional research programs in the companies and the society. So, I would like to limit my presentation for the given time. But uh, this is a very, very uh, uh, comprehensive topic, but I try to be as specific as I just can. So on my first slide, uh, I try to summarize the nature of the industry and academy interactions uh, from the point of the industry and from the point of, of, of specific industries. So uh, the nature of the university and the university and university interactions varies from industry to industry as well as among companies within a given industry and individual academic institution as well. So each of the industries studied uh, in the past 10 years, let me say 10 years, is a distinctive environment and poses very, very different challenges for university researchers. So in building infrastructure for network systems, universities have historically been test beds for new concept, concepts and capabilities, of course. For example, the medical devices and equipment industry, fundamental multidisciplinary research involving physical sciences and engineering combined with academic medical centers or provides a critical environment for researching, developing, testing, or even improving devices and for conducting clinical uh, trials. So I don't want to go details in, in so many industries. I just wanted to give you a, an, an example from the, from the medical industry. But by contrast, the less mature unmented area vehicle sector of the industry looks to academic research for technical support, for example. So the wide, the wide variety of university industry research interactions so in these in the in the examined industries makes it very very difficult to make a generalization so with the notable exception of the multi company research centers at the universities that i'm sure that you experience and you have you faced with the most financial, financial support by industry is negotiated company by company so the companies have very very different sources to devote to a and research, research of, of value to the industry. So generalization about what works best for all industries and universities should therefore be made very, very cautiously. So on my second slide, I, I went a little bit into the into the details so, and I would like to read a few words about the contribution of, of academic research to the industry and uh, rather, uh, rather I would like to talk about the impact on the society, not, uh, not in the beginning. So, so the contribution of the academic research to the industries include amongst other, for example, the, gradu the graduates train in modern research techniques or fundamental concept as key either ideas resulting from basic and applied research and the development of and testing of tools, prototypes and marketable products, processes and services, of course. And the sources of this contribution include uh, you can see here in my slide, for example, the engineering, the natural sciences, the computer sciences, mathematics, social sciences, or even the behavioral sciences. And we don't have to forget about the management studies and uh, the policy, the policy sciences as well. So um, on uh, my next slide, I would like to give you a very short uh, insight. Uh, about, uh, about the initiative or the intention that is behind the support of EU. So the question is why EU supports the industrial research. So I think it's very would be very, very, it seems very simple the answer, but it is not, not at all. So the, the, uh, the research and innovation is at the heart of the renewed European industrial uh, strategy, which uh, paves the way to the green and digital transition 
transition of the of the whole EU and the uh, but mainly the EU industry. So to accelerate the twin green and the digital transition, the Commission has proposed co-created so-called co uh, so-called uh, uh, transition pathways, the, including the development of of the industrial technology road roadmaps. You can see here on my side and investment in research and innovation through the Horizon Europe partnership. You might be familiar, with, uh, I think you are all familiar with the Horizon Europe partnership uh, uh, nature in the industry. So the public research and investments will trigger private investments, so this is the intention, which are monitored through the yearly so-called industrial research and development scoreboard. So this uh, industrial research and development scoreboard, I brought you two uh, figures on my next slide. So where I would like to illustrate, so what is the main objective of the industrial uh, investment scoreboard? It is uh, amongst other is to benchmark the performance of the EU innovation driven industries against the main global counterparts or competitors. So the 2020 edition of the scoreboard analysis mm, almost uh, 2500 companies uh, which are investigating larger sums in R&D in the world in, the, uh, in 2019. So what were the key findings? You can also see on my figure, but uh, first of all, the worldwide investment in research and development continued to increase significantly in 2019. Uh, for the last or uh, for the tenth consecutive year, the 2,500 companies in the, that were investigated for the sco scoreboard invested a total a huge amount, 900 billion uh, euros in R&D in 2019, which is almost. 9% more than in 2018, at the, which is the same increase, and the same increase was uh, experienced uh, the year before. So companies based in the EU increased their R&D research by 5.6% uh, below the growth rate, of course, the US, which is almost the double, it was 10%, and Chinese, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, 21% of the companies and the rest of the world. So it's a very, very interesting trend. I, I'm really sorry, but the, I, I think the, the letters are very small, but you maybe you believe me that these are the figures on this on the slide. So um, the next slide uh, goes a bit further because it is about the R&D investment by region, by countries and, and per sectors. And uh, you can see here that the global R&D investment is driven by fast-growing industries, or the or the so-called um, where the so-called gazelle uh, gazelle companies, the high, so I mean the high growth potential companies are very very active, and uh, mainly the ICT and health. Uh, industry and thus the differences in sector composition on uh, on these two slides explain the different patterns of the research development growth across uh, world region. So the industrial R&D is extremely concentrated with the top four sectors contributing 77% uh, of the total R&D, ICT producers, are on the first place, uh, which is followed with the health, health industries, ICT services, and last, last but not least, it is the automotive industry. So the R&D growth rates of these sectors in 2019 ranged from ICT services uh, at uh, almost 20% to past at 10%. So uh, all in one, these two figures is about that the EU has a stronger automotive industry than other regions, in, but it is behind the US in health, particularly the, uh, the biotech industry. And of course, it is lagging behind China and even further behind the US in ICT industries, which is mostly about uh, softwares and the internet. So therefore, the EU's R&D performance is shaped by R&D growth within the automotive sector, whereas the R&D in the US is dominated by the fast-growing ICT and health sector, as I as I uh, mentioned before. So on my next slide, I uh, 
I am not showing uh, you. We, we can skip. I think we can skip with this slide. This is just about that how the automotive industry is in the first place of the R&D researches. So I would like rather to have a few words about the industry 5.0 uh, and the society. So because I wanted to have a few words about the impact of the research on the society as well, but before going into details, I would like to have. A, I would like to give you a short summary about uh, this uh, new trend. So the European industry is a key driver in the economic and social societal transition that uh, we are currently undergoing. So in order to remain the engine of the prosperity, industry must lead the digital and green transition, which is supported by R&D and R&D spending and R&D performance. And Industry 5.0 provides a vision of the industry that aims beyond the efficiency and productivity as the simple or sole goals and re reinforces the role of the contribution of industry to the society. So it places the well-being, the human of the worker at the center of the production processes and uses new technologies to provide the prosperity beyond the jobs and growth while respecting and production, the production limits of the planet. So it is very, very important. And if I have to uh, sum up in one word, the human is in the center of the new transition, the society and the well-being of the humans. On my, on my next slide, uh, I try to give you a a short outlook on the university research uh, collaborations and I, I know that uh, I think you know, know it. This university business research collaboration has been the subject and focus of attention for many, many years on several levels. So at the level of university themselves with the development of the so-called third mission. So this is the entrepreneurial character of the universities, if I can say it. At the policy level, through new initiatives and at regional, national and EU level to foster the innovation and job creation through research and training. And last but not least, in the political uh, discourse or rather debate that has been accounted uh, uh, by the recent financial and economic crisis. So um, this collaborative research project use two complementary approaches to collect data university business cooperation so in-depth uh, case studies through questionnaires and workshops and this project aimed at identifying the main trends, trends and cross-cutting uh, issues in the long-term collaborative research project uh, so the i mean the the impact on the industry and on the society and uh, uh, this report also shares good practices that have been learned through the, their experience in developing industry and business collaboration. So, and the main conclusion, the main conclusion of this uh, collaborative research project was to highlight some of the most important aspects in developing successful university, industrial, and business partnerships. So, I mean the the academic part of the research and the industrial part of the research. So how to foster the strategic mission of the universities and it provides a closer connection between education, the research and the innovation and adapting the evolving needs of the labor market at the same time, which is the, uh, this is the aspect of the society. And finally, a key major outcome of this project was a new assessment tool of the University Business Research Partnership. This is the UB tool. Uh, I don't know whether it is. Pardon? Okay, so I, I think uh, I think a lot of uh, lot of the the participant of this conference is using this tool. And uh, on my last slide, uh, I tried to give you some good examples. No, this, no, this is a, I've got one more, sorry. So 
I would like to illustrate you how how many of uh, that what is the what is the uh, rate in the in the human resources who were involved into the research and development proposal and you can see that the faculty staff researcher has the highest rate so and, and we all know that when setting up a collaborative research project, different stakeholders within the university are typically involved, not just in the negotiation, but of course in the in the whole execution uh, uh, execution process. So in almost all case studies, the faculty staff or researcher were involved uh, mostly and in the partnership and the research and technology office, which is a very, very important part of the university, the liberal department and the rector or vice rector were also involved in the negotiation in at least half of the case studies. And uh, finally, I, uh, I summarized the two uh, very, very interesting case studies on my last slide where I tried to illustrate how the, the industry, the academy and the society can work together. The first one is the Politecnico di Torino and the other one is the Technical University Innovation Klimzug North. And in the first case, the region of Piedmont has assigned, uh, and uh, I would like to read it from here, assigned research and strategic role in the development of the local economy. So they were aiming at uh, ecosystem building, considering it as an instrument to overcome the current global crisis. For this reason, innovation hubs have been introduced by EU law relating to state aids for research, development and innovation. So this innovation, the digital innovation hubs and other innovation hubs are entitled and are the subject of this EU funds, which has been absorbed by the region in its policy. And in the other case, the objective of this Klimzug uh, project is the development of the innovative strategies for adaptation to the green transition, to climate change, the funding activity particularly Peculiarly stresses the regional aspect uh, since global problems such as climate change must be tackled at regional and local level and uh, they allocated uh, resources not just at academy but on societal level as well. So in nutshell, uh, that was uh, all I wanted to share with you. Uh, I, it was a very, very wide topic. I hope um, you, uh, you, maybe you found some interesting point in it. And should you have any question, please feel free to contact the university or me uh, uh, through this email. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Um. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I just want to say uh, and uh, show a few slides about my uh, professional practice based research case study, which actually I made uh, with the University of Seychelles of Hungary. Uh, just uh, about the topic, a short introduction of, about the PhD journey, my experience, and of course the next steps alive after the PhD program. Uh, I also have to say that uh, this is based on my personal experience during my PhD journey together with the Sechin University and with uh, the Audi Hungaria car manufacturing in Hungary. So this is not a research based, it is not based on uh, feedback from other uh, in, uh, participants, it's my own uh, journey. Uh, first, the introduction about the program is actually started in 2016, where uh, I also applied for the PhD program, and the start was uh, in September 2016. Two years long, the core courses, and in the meantime, and in the second two years, main field is the publication, the conferences, the research project with the university or industry, and of course, teaching at the university. And it, uh, the uh, four years program is ending with the internal defense and the final defense. Uh, a few words about my class because uh, 24 uh, candidates started and actually 12 uh, finished uh, the, and get the PhD degree before the deadline. And uh, there is uh, two type of dissertation. One is the monographic type and the other is paper based dissertation. And practice-based research activity, you could see the fields on operation control, robotization, cross-cultural management, energy law, project management, digitalization, 
hybrid corporate reality. So this is all mixed and all different fields uh, as my my colleagues at the university had the uh, experience on different fields. And there is what well, there was one general requirement is publishing your globally ranked articles and, and papers. If I go to more specific to my journey, so I started in 2016. I made a research project uh, together with the university and the Audi car manufacturing uh, and also teaching at the university. I made also and I participated a lot of conference in uh, Austria, in Italy, in the UK and uh, three times in the US and mainly presenting my topic and uh, collecting feedback about my topic and my progress of, of my research, which actually I made a publication in the Industrial Robot Journal, which is a Q2, Q3, having a ranking or age uh, index is 50. And I just uh, recognized yesterday it is already cited uh, six times. And of course, I made also, and I tried other publication, I submitted to Q1, Q2 journal, and it's depending on the journal how long it, it takes. And uh, I made my internal defense in September, and I get, uh, and I made my final defense in February in this year. This is actually on the, the, my PhD journey, and in the meantime, I'm working as a production manager at Audi uh, Hungary in the car manufacturing since uh, 2010. But uh, now I have an international assignment in uh, China, so I took uh, over a, a position in China. Is uh, taking care of the new product introduction and the new car manufacturing here in China, in a small city called Changchun with uh, 13 million people and having a factory capacity up to two million cars a year. Uh, my topic and shortly just uh, showing my uh, PhD thesis is actually measuring the complexity in the ro uh, robot human interaction where I could uh, combine two new technology. One is uh, a human robot interaction where the robot is working without any cage together with the uh, workers. And on the other side, uh, I combine this with the uh, object detection. So there is a new technology. It's uh, I could follow up of the movement of the people, the movement of the robot, and I could uh, actually measure the collaboration because in the human robot collaboration is always the question, how, how is the collaboration or there is more a collision, a real collaboration, or there is no collaboration at all. Just shortly about uh, my topic. And if I go to the experience and the review of my progress, which I actually I put in different uh, uh, aspects, uh, because there are at least three play, uh, players, the university playing a major role, the company, and of course the PhD candidate. I put this together like the, how is the research topic evolved, how is the motivation, how is the network, the culture, the finance uh, side, uh, how is the help for the PhD students, and of course uh, the people side. Um, it's like uh, uh, different fields, like research topic, has the industry, the university, and the PhD candidate had all different aspects. The industry, they have a problem in the practice, and they are really having experience in real life, how it is working, what kind of problems, because they are really focusing on problem solving. And uh, they have a new technology in, in real life, and uh, they are not experimenting, but they are want to really use and gain uh, uh, the financial benefit of the new technology. And they are willing to buy, and they are willing to introduce and using it. On the other side, the university is uh, having theory for everything. So they know that how it should work, uh, so they could help the industry. They are really having methods for the analyzing, analysis. They have a uh, quite limited access to the latest technology, uh, but they are really want to help and they want to cooperate with the industry and they, they want to have a common project uh, with the industries. And if you have a PhD who is working in the industry and uh, want to um, make a, a, a PhD and a PhD candidate has uh, experience in own work and facing these industrial problems, have no idea at the beginning what kind of topic uh, they want to uh, put into the PhD. Uh, and uh, I still remember my first presentation that I made. Uh, the feedback was because I made a, a kind of industry uh, based and industrial style presentation, the first academic feedback was, what is the research? So I had no idea also at the beginning. 
I just know that something with the, the problem which I'm facing in work. I could also identify and follow on the research field and I still need to have as a PhD candidate interest in the problem to solve. And the motivation is actually that the PhD program for an industry or a company is not a core business. So it's, they are not uh, there for making PhD program. They are really limiting the time allocated to the PhD as a program because it's, uh, they are more focusing on the core business. They also having uh, limited resources for open results. When I uh, go there and I say we want to make a PhD and they are asking, OK, what will be the result? But mainly you cannot uh, really say what will be the financial benefits of the, of the uh, research. And of course, there is not really experience with the PhD program. How is it put together? What are the requirements? What uh, the candidates should uh, do? They, uh, they are more focusing on the results. On the university, on the other side, they have a PhD program as a core business and they are really interested in PhD topics. They are giving, they are helping to find the, the, the right PhD topics. They are also allocated the time for the PhD as uh, uh, they are saying, OK, it's available and you can choose, it's flexible. They are really supporting the PhD because they also want to have a success for the university. I also have to uh, tell that I heard several motivation speeches. What is the publication journey? How, is, how you can fail in a PhD? And uh, giving a hard feedback to the student that this is not a research. Or one of my professors said when I made a questionnaire based research, my, my first uh, trial, he said that, yes, it's good, but uh, why this, this question is asked? What is the scale? What is the representative on the industry? So he's really just said that I can, could make a, a, a feedback or that uh, questionnaire based research, but uh, I should uh, note that I only can measure time and distance. On the university, they also have a good platform for promote PhD students. So they are they are have an opportunity to, to make an interview with the students and they are just uh, really making a, a, a good advertisement for the PhD students. In the meantime, for the motivation, the PhD has had own motivation. And of course, giving time. One of the other professors said is that PhD is an everyday job for the candidate. And I fully agree with that. Uh, also having uh, the PhD candidate a pressure to make progress. You have to show in every semester that uh, what's the next step, what you are planning, what you are uh, successing and what you are doing. And having inspiration from the university, from the professors, from the publication. I had uh, sometimes a discussion with one of the professors six hours long about the topics that how we could make uh, progress and what, how we should measure, for example. And uh, the PhD candidate also has uh, try and error on conferences, presenting own topic and having a feedback. And uh, some of the uh, academic world is really giving a hard feedback and saying this is not actually a research. And of, of course, if the publication and the, the journals are rejecting uh, the paper, which uh, I was thinking it is one of the best paper and it just came back, now it still should, uh, could be improved. So this try and error is uh, following the PhD uh, candidates. On the network side, the industry and the company has really more production facilities all over the world. Uh, but on the other side, they are not really willing to share the result with the outside world. Within the company, yes. And they are even uh, having process for the intellectual property, how you can uh, uh, keep this uh, new research. And they also having access to the latest developments through the suppliers, uh, to, the, to uh, the development centers. They are having own research and uh, development. And they are also having formal relationship with the university, having a support and making common researches and teaching, at least having the formal way that how it uh, could uh, work. The university has uh, actually uh, all this uh, own uh, network within the university and also having the international network, having the conference knowledge, because for a PhD candidate, which conference should visit or which, which uh, journal should use and uh, share uh, their own research, they could help on that. They are also having a, a contact with the startup companies who is around the university and it, it uh, could uh, really help for the PhD candidate and also for the industry. And this, they also have an inside man in the university who is uh, really willing and can build a bridge between the university and the world and the PhD students. 
The PhD students uh, uh, had also the network within the company and can help uh, uh, in the collaboration with the, the university. Uh, having the network at the university and also want to share, publish, but not hurt company interest. It was interesting in my case that uh, I had a new process uh, in, in my research. I wanted to, uh, uh, on one side, uh, really publish as soon as I can. On the other side, uh, I could not share it uh, with, with, the, with the world. So this is a kind of struggle with the topic. Uh, I could also see the latest technology in practice, and I also could be an uh, inside man and the company and helping and uh, uh, building a bridge between the university and the company to really uh, um, helping the company to understand the world in the university. And also I had the advantage of small physical distance to the university in the company and uh, not uh, having an online discussion, more a personal discussion and more a personal meetings. The culture in the industry is having their own DNA and company culture and having their own company universe, uh, how they are uh, working together. They have rules like the GDPR, company image, and they are really performance indicator oriented. If I go there and I make, I want to make a research, the first question, which KPI is actually affected and how is it helping the company um, producing more or having uh, less resources and having the same results? The university has also own uh, culture and diversity. There are a lot of different people there and uh, they are experts in different fields. Uh, on the other side, it's sometimes it's hard to measure the progress. If uh, the PhD student is there, is it making progress or is this too is it uh, too slow or is ahead of the program? And and also have to say between the two culture, sometimes uh, aligning the and complying the company life and the university way of working is hard for the PhD student because in the industry everything is. Uh, there, there, are, there is a kind of time pressure in the university world that is okay, it is not doing today, it's enough uh, tomorrow. So there is a two different uh, work and have their own personality to really uh, live together with the two different uh, uh, culture. On the finance side, uh, the, the companies, uh, they have a money for economic solutions. So if it is gaining uh, with this investment, then they are willing to pay. But uh, uh, supporting the PhD, they are expecting a financial advantage to, to do. On the university, they have a, a fund for PhD program and they are always having a sub project within the big project. So this is also a kind of uh, financial aspect. The PhD candidate has the, the scholarship possibility and also what uh, the university can offer or the company can offer is really helpful for the PhD candidate. Uh, on the people side, the industry uh, mainly having engineers with BSc or MSc, they are, there is a, a few PhD, uh, but they are really a different field and they are really scattered in the organization, one in the quality assurance, one in the production, one, one is the a, in the HR, but they are not within one department. They are more at the development. The university is really having a really wide view and experience uh, and they are helpful for the PhD students. I think I never had the experience when I asked uh, from the professor a help, they say that, that no or no time. They always uh, give a feedback and they always uh, help. And in the uh, PhD candidate is really have to use this kind of resources and find the right people, the right supervisor and having the inside man at the university who is really helping uh, between the lions uh, of the university and uh, making progress in their own research and have to balance between the two worlds. Helping for the PhD student from the industry, they are uh, tolerating the PhD study. So when you are, when the uh, uh, industry having a PhD study, it takes time and it takes uh, a lot of energy from the candidate. But if the industry is uh, also in the meantime uh, giving a hard time, then it's it's hard to to make uh, the the hundred percent job and also being hundred percent PhD candidate uh, successfully. On the university have they organized courses, possibility for teaching, stage for PhD students, which uh, the PhD candidate really have to ask and uh, demand and use the, uh, the uh, ask uh, and the offer at help because it's uh, own uh, interest. Uh, 
On the other side, in the further step after the PhD program is I also have to say that the publication, the industrial research project, the teaching at the university and taking part on conferences is actually never ending. And if I review that, uh, that after three years, uh, I will go back uh, to Hungary, uh, returning to the Audi car manufacturing. In the meantime, I'm also saying that I have to follow my research topic and keep the motivation uh, in, beside the work, keep the network alive, helping the PhD students. And one of the reasons I am here today, really helping the university have the company in PhD program. Thank you for the attention.